Hey, what is up, my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan, and today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to describe the self-ionization of water and describe a solution in terms of concentrations of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Breaking it down a little bit, we are first going to describe the self-ionization of water. What does it mean to self-ionize? Two, we are going to describe the equilibrium constant of water, known as Kw. Three, we are going to describe a solution in terms of hydronium ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration. And then, quattro. We are going to calculate hydronium ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration using Kw. Okay, so first, we're just gonna start with water as a neutral starting point. Again, as we try to better understand how we define something as an acid or base, we're gonna start with water, our neutral starting point. But, you know, what does it mean that water is neutral? I mean, we probably say that all the time without understanding really what that means. And it turns out that although pure water is mostly molecules of water, conductivity measurements indicate there's a small amount of ions that are present in pure water that come from what's known as the self-ionization of a small amount of the water molecules. In other words, some of the water molecules self-ionize. They turn themselves into ions. And as you thoroughly study your notes and look at the screen in front of you, there's a thrilling equilibrium equation that is written there to illustrate this idea of self-ionization of water. And it turns out that in pure water, a couple of molecules can actually self-ionize and turn into a hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. But remember, this is equilibrium dynamic state. And so as you look at the animation that's occurring at the bottom of your screen, I think it does a better job of illustrating this dynamic back and forth. So in a beaker of pure water, you've got water molecules turning into these hydronium ions and hydroxide ions and then turning back into uh, water molecules. Now, important things to recognize, uh, the self-ionization of water is going to produce equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide ions at a concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar each at 25 degrees Celsius. And because there are equal concentrations of both hydronium ions and hydroxide ions, we say water is neutral. Bah! So when you are, you know, showing off your chemistry skills and you are saying, oh yeah, water is neutral, you can go further now and explain that, well, water is neutral because there are equal concentrations of both hydronium ion and hydroxide ions due to the self-ionization of water. Really impress the ladies or the gentleman, either way. Okay, so let's take a quick time out and come to this amazing simulation that is gonna help us better understand not only the self-ionization of water, but what it means when a solution is acidic or basic. Um, so when you look at your beaker of water, again, you may think not a whole lot is going on, uh, but I'm gonna click this thriller of a button and boom, recognize that your sample of water actually will have small concentrations, small but equal concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide ions in pure water. Now, as we apply this equilibrium reaction to the idea of an equilibrium constant, which relates the ratio of the products to the reactants, we end up with an expression for the equilibrium constant of water that looks like this, Kw equals hydronium ions times hydroxide ions. And because each of those concentrations are the same in pure water, and at 25 degrees Celsius, those are one times 10 to the negative seven each, Kw, the constant value for Kw at 25 degrees Celsius is gonna be one times 10 to the negative 14. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. One, notice that the equilibrium constant expression does not include the reactants. And remember that when we're writing equilibrium constant expressions, we never include pure liquids or pure solids in our equilibrium constant expression. And notice that the reactants are both liquids and therefore not included. Also remember that a K value that is less than one, which this is here, quite a bit less, indicates there's a lot of reactant present at equilibrium. In other words, when you think about a beaker of water, it is in fact mostly water molecules. 
but keep in mind that there are small concentrations, exactly one times 10 negative seven molar concentrations of both hydronium and hydroxide at 25 degrees Celsius in your beaker of water. Okay, so pure water. Again, our neutral starting point, equal concentrations of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So what does it mean then if a solution is acidic or if it's basic? Well, it comes back to this relationship between those hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Our neutral starting point says that if they're the same concentration, it's gonna be a neutral solution. And then if there is more hydronium ion than hydroxide ion, it is going to be acidic. And if there's more hydroxide ion than there is hydronium ion, it will be basic. But it's also important to recognize that Kw is a constant. And in order for it to remain constant, when you put something in water that increases the hydronium ion concentration, you'll have to decrease the hydroxide concentration in order to get that Kw value to remain the same. Likewise, for basic solutions, when you increase hydroxide ion concentrations, you will decrease the hydronium ion concentrations. Okay, so let's take a quick look at an acidic solution. Again, our Kw expression for pure water, these two concentrations will be the same. But in an acidic solution, I dump in, say, some HCl, which is gonna drive up the concentration of hydronium ions. When you put that acid in solution, you're essentially putting in more of this product, which will react with some of the hydroxide ion and use it up to form more water molecules. And it's gonna do so in such a ratio so that Kw remains the same. Remember, it's a constant. So for example, if I put in enough hydronium ion to raise the concentration to one times 10 to the negative one, that means that my hydroxide ion concentration is gonna to have to decrease to one times 10 to the negative 13, so that my Kw value, one times 10 to the negative 14, remains unchanged. And again, notice that a larger concentration of hydronium ion is gonna indicate an acidic solution. Okay, so let's come back to this thriller of a simulation. And again, think about we have pure water, equal concentrations of both hydronium ion and hydroxide ions in that pure water sample. But notice when I increase the concentration of my hydronium ions, the hydroxide ion concentration will decrease in such a fashion so that the product of my hydronium ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration will always equal one times 10 to the negative 14. For example, notice if I have increased my hydronium ion concentration to, to one times 10 to the negative four, my hydroxide ion concentration must go down to one times 10 to the negative 10. Check out your solution. Very acidic, lots and lots of hydronium ions, very little hydroxide ion. Similarly, I want you to think about what happens when we drop a base into water, like sodium hydroxide. Again, recognize that our original neutral water is gonna have equal concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide. But when you drop in a base that increases the concentration of hydroxide ion, essentially we drop in a bunch of this product, which will react with some of the hydronium ion and use it up, decreasing its concentration in such a fashion so that Kw will remain constant. So notice this time, if you increase the concentration of the hydroxide ions, the hydronium ions must decrease in such a way so that Kw remains constant. So again, coming back to our neutral beaker of water, now let's say I'm gonna try and make a basic solution. It's gonna be a solution in which I have increased the concentration of my hydroxide ions. And let's say that I increase my concentration of hydroxide ions to one times 10 to the negative five. My hydronium ions must have decreased to one times 10 to the negative nine. Again, one times 10 to the negative nine times one times 10 to the negative five is gonna equal one times 10 to the negative 14, keeping Kw constant. And in a basic solution, you're gonna have a greater concentration of hydroxide ions. Oh, hydroxide. And we are done. Take a quick moment to check out the references beneath the video.